here at WAND Radio strive to bring you the very best entertainment the High Academy for the Celestial and the Occult has to offer. The Academy would like to remind our listeners that unicorns and other virtuous beings should enjoy WAND Radio at their own risk. Uh, yeah, the management is not responsible for the continued purity of your unicorn. Thank you. Rupert von Koenig, using the shittiest mic that we had in storage. I'm sorry, Rupert. That stinks. No, no, I'm it. Was that the right place? I could barely hear him. Yeah, it's close enough. It's fine. All right. you get when you have a studio cat who likes to chew on cables. So, um, how's the new dorm room? It's, uh, takes some getting used to. I mean, you're sleeping with your head facing a different direction, and... The bathroom is a different distance from where you had it, so you have to time things differently. It's just, you know. Are you cutting it that close? Do you have to time things getting to the bathroom? You don't know my life. I don't know that I want to. I, I, you, so what do you have it down to? Like, you got a little hourglass on your thing? Like, okay, I got to go. I know I got to get this much time to get to the bathroom. It's just a feeling. You're like. Oh, nope, that's, uh, that's, that's, okay, now I can make it home. If I wait 10 more minutes, I'll have to use one of the, the, the hallway bathrooms. And if I wait 20 more minutes, uh, I'm going to have to go right here. I mean, is that, is that it? Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, you never know when these dormitory bathrooms, if there's people going to be using it. If you're going to need to, you know, water the garden, as, as they say. I was going to say, we don't judge you. And it when you eat all of the five Phoenix chilies, so he eats way more of that than I do. He destroyed a chair. Come on now. I am responsible for a large amount of office equipment replacement in this uh in this studio. Apologies. Is that why they haven't, why they haven't replaced the microphone cables yet? That's why I can't have renter's insurance. Ah. School announcements. Yay for summer term school announcements. Okay, Uh, for those of you who are still on campus uh, during the summertime, uh, we have the cafeteria food naming contest. Um, So we are taking suggestions for uh, clever names for cafeteria meals and uh, things that you would like to see on the menu for next term. Uh, If you have any ideas, feel free to write in. Uh, We've got a few here that uh, we've already come up with. So uh, these are already taken. Credit goes to uh, the three of us, because you can't have it. Things like um, chili-powered spell jammers, or tensor's floating bisque. <laughs> That's clever. Um, Mordekainen's magnificent new pop, I like. A Big B's grasping goulash. That one, uh, that one sounds uh, not that interesting. Tasha's hideous hummus. Do we want to eat something hideous? Well, just because it looks bad doesn't mean it's going to taste bad. That's that's most Indian food. It tastes better than it looks, sure. I mean, okay. Um, we have uh, Otto's Irresistible Burrito, or Morin Kanan's Magical Mufuleta. Mufuleta? Is that a word? Yes, it's very good. What is it? Yeah, it's a li- it's lion. What? <laughs> We're not catching the reference. You know that's over. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Melf's Minute Macarons. Um, although, uh, I mean, I mean, what is a Melf? Something that you're very interested in, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably. Maybe Enid's Bugbear Beignets? We have uh, Goblin Gumbo. <laughs> I get it. 
I like that. <laughs> uh, Hador's halfling hash. Is that halfling hash made? Is that hash made for halflings? I don't want to know. We need to follow up with that person who wrote in last week. I like Sacred Fonday. That makes me laugh. That is good, yeah. Uh, we have um, Eldritch Breakfast, which, I mean, I've seen the warlocks, um, the, the microwave. It's not pretty. Rary's Telepathic Ribs, a meat sticks right to your brain? Would they scream when you eat them? Oh man, that'd be amazing. Reminds me of a Tinder profile that I saw. It was, uh, Take you know, take the girl out for for ribs on the first date, and you judge her based on the consumption of meat, and if she is able to to best him, um, it would be the like the romance of a century, or of a millennium that that, that the world would know to fear the two of them. It was it was brilliant. It was something to see. So he is judging her on how well she sucks off of the bone. One might say. Investiture of ham. No, Emmett, no. Emmett's over here. Emmett will be over here now. Investiture of ham. Who's investing in ham? Maybe maybe people who file for pork barrel legislature. I was trying to figure out how to work that one in there. Good job. Um, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, that's who. Investiture? You're talking about trading places? Yes, yes it's a trading places reference. Hmm, what else could be? What else could be their name? You know that what they did is highly illegal. <laughs> yes, that was kind of the point. I think that was the point of the entire movie. But it's only illegal if you get caught? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Alright, why don't we, can we, we got any letters this week? Nicolaipi, if you, uh, if you have any letters, I think it would be a good time. Uh, I think so. Um, Dear WAD, I am a Gorgon living in the Underdark, and I recently killed a drow priestess. She had a sc- um, she had a scourge of fangs with her, and I took it, and I really like the snake-headed whip. Um, with it, I have become the terror of my territory, and no one dares set foot in my lair. So you're a Medusa with a snake whip, okay? Um... The problem is that my head serpents think the whip is stuck up, and the whip is upset that it isn't included in my serpent's conversation. How do I get them to get along better? Signed, Snarky Snakes. Thank you for your listenership. Uh, we we appreciate uh, people who appreciate quality radio programs, no matter where they hail from. Uh, that's a good start. Yes, if you find any quality radio programs, please let us know where they are. We'd love to listen. <laughs> so, maybe you bring in uh, a a blind mediator, you know, one who uh, would uh, not only see things from both perspectives, but also wouldn't be able to see because you know, reasons. I was going to say, I think I'm kind of stonewalled on this one. Maybe uh, some sort of blind mongoose. Oh, back to the mongoose again, huh? Yeah, just don't, um, just don't serve coffee. Why? They might make a bridge with that. <laughs> so, I mean, you really have to get someone in there who can listen and just kind of, you know, maybe get the scale of the situation. You can just vibe with that smirk off your face right now. It, it, this is where we're going. The snake buns. Okay. Well, we have to maintain focus on the jokes, so that we can't be just throwing them out there all hither and slither. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can't let it rattle us, that's for sure. But seriously, you're... You're the sentient being here. Um... Of course, your hair snakes, your head snakes, the snakes that are always with you, um, they will always be with you. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when you try to mediate. But you, you need to lay down the law. You need to say, this is how things are going to be. You're going to talk. And 
You may not like it, but you're going to communicate at the very least. Because you cannot effectively rule your, you know, your territory with uh, an iron fist if that iron fist is beginning to rust. Very astute. We uh, wish you very, very much good luck and uh, hope our advice doesn't come back to bite you in the ass. Just make sure you don't uh, don't look your uh, your little snake that your snake whip in the eye. Wouldn't want to take it for granted. <laughs> so we. Uh, that's a nice. That's a nice schist. <laughs> that's a tufa. Ha! I like it. You know what? Uh, we should uh, uh, we should introduce her to that um, uh, that Saint Patrick fellow. Didn't he drive the snakes out? Yeah, there you see. He's really good with snakes. But she wants to keep both sets of snakes. Oh. She just wants to make them get along. It's a thought. Very true. Um, shall we go ahead and take our next question? Sure. All right. Dear Emmett, I am very lonely. However, I am also very terrible at flirting. Could you give me some surefire lines that are guaranteed to work? Pickup line? That, I know a good pickup line um, that I really like used on me is, Hi, my name is so-and-so. What's yours? That tends to work really well. What if this person's name ain't so-and-so? Then they use their name in place of so-and-so. All right, I got it. I've, you know, I've always admired being a little bit clever. With the pickup lines, you know, uh, apologies, I seem to have lost my number. Can I have yours? Because it's unobtrusive, it's non-invasive, if they want to tell you to fuck off, they can. No harm, no foul. I think it's important to remember that the person that you are interested in is also a person. Cleverness is encouraged and can be fun. You know, just... The most important thing is to be yourself. Although we are not Emmett, and this whole question was addressed to him, uh, those are just my two cents. My two flopper. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I just usually say, hey, I'm Emmett. I mean, that's pretty much what I say. I try that. Confidence is key. Maybe we should try a role play. Sure. Okay, Emmett, I'm sitting at the bar. I am reading a book. Um... Wearing a, a slinky black number, you know, something something sexy, something that, you know, I might be out, uh, you know, looking for a night under town, you know, but what would you say? What would you say to me? Hey, I'm Emmett. And? Depends on what you say. That was what I was saying, and? Oh, yeah, nope. I walk away, turn left, hey, I'm Emmett. <laughs> Seriously, you get a better reaction than that. I mean, it takes, you know, five, six, seven times, but you'll find someone. You get a good reaction, a giggle, or, uh, you know, a hey, I'm whatever. And then you say, hey, can I buy you a drink? You get a crappy answer, you just move on. It's a numbers game. It's a very egalitarian way to look at it. I mean, if you're only looking to, to get a date, I mean, that's it. That's how you do it. You know, you you, you do have some wisdom. I told you guys, it's A1. The best. Double plus good. You can't beat it. Double. You guys never listen. Double plus good? Double plus good. What is that? It's double plus good. What does it sound like? I, I, I'm i trying to picture it in my head. Double plus good. Just two, two plus marks and then, then G with the, with the umlauts and then T. You need to read more. You ain't never read the, uh, um, what is it, 1984? No. It's Newspeak from uh, Orwell. Double plus good. That means it's very, very good, as opposed to plus good. Or just good. Ah. No. It's like a rating system. That was, uh, unexpected. All right. I told you every time. You guys just you guys don't know nothing. You just you consistently surprise us, Emmett. You you're a constant fount of yeah yeah. You just good. That's what I do. I'm I'm incompetent. Where you think I'm going to be smart? I'm smart. Where you think I'm going to be? You incompetent. know, 
new things every day, every day. And we haven't even gotten into wrestling. I, I used all my wrestling information up early on. Although I do know a little bit more now. Oh. Some of the kings of our kingdom put together a little event this weekend. It was pretty amazing. What kind of event? Um, I don't know. They all got together and had little uh, little round tables, discussions, and powwows, and played some games, and told hmm. some stories. It was pretty neat. That sounds interesting. It was something neat. That's an S-O-M-E, but the capitals are on the S, the M, and the E. Oh, yes. Yes, well done. Yeah, oh, I heard about that. It, it uh, took place over in Waterdeep, right? Yep, that's true. It did take place over in Waterdeep. I've never been. Neither have I. Me neither, but I'd love to go. See, we should go someday. I have to see if there's some sort of study program over there. Or we could uh, go to the app, right? And see if we can't uh, fund our trip that way. Uh, 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 uh. Hello, I'm a DM. And I'm a PC. We use a lot of the same tools. Unlike poly polyhedral dice. But we retain a lot of what makes us, um, us. Right. Uh, you should see what this guy can do with a plus three Holy Avenger. Oh, shucks. But uh, he knows I'm better uh, at the creative stuff, like uh, plot hooks, monsters, and destroying your emotions. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what do you, exactly do you mean by better? Oh, by better I mean uh, hitting that save right when it's most needed is, for me, is easy, when for you, it's not. Oh, that kind of better. I was thinking of the other kind. What other kind? So, you only have the hardest time with during summertime is finding food that doesn't have to be cooked because, oh my gosh, it's always so hot. But I love Nature Box right now because all of their snacks are super healthy and filling and really tasty. Yeah, and aren't they free from uh, artificial pillows and sweetness? So I know that I'm still getting good nutrition even if I'm just eating snacks. Because let's face it, uh, they're thinning crispy coconut cookies and their strawberry apple fruit squares. I'd probably rather eat anyway. <laughs> what about these pistachio power clusters? Oh my gosh, those are so good! Mm. They look tasty. Mm hmm. And the teriyaki beef jerky if you're looking for a little bit of protein. And of course, if you're looking for something on the sweet side, they've got um, green yogurt, apple cinnamon oat bars, and mini Belgian waffles too. They have Maya lemon cookies? Yes, and they're my favorite. I love lemon-flavored anything. Oh, my goodness. My God, I need to order some of these. How do I do this? So, you, in order to order, you go to nerdsmith.org uh -huh. backslash snacks. Okay. And you use the code 30, T-H-I-R-T-Y, 3, the number, for 30% off your first three orders. Wow. That's a substantial savings. And the items are already so cheap, I get the discount on the already price of the items? Mm-hmm. Yes, if you choose to become a member of the site, you do get a discount on the my items as well. Wow. I'm going to go sign up now. Good. Um, order me a box of the lemon cookies, please. I'll pay you back later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. You know what I need? I need some sort of, like, magic item or something that I can put the snack on to make it a full-size meal. To take it from a big island pineapple to, like... A monster island pineapple? Hey, you know what? I, I think I actually got you covered there. Uh, my buddy just sent me um, uh, something. Hold on. He, he put it in this bag over here. It was a dwarven plate. That sounds like armor. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I bought. Um, no, uh, here it is. It's just this plate here. It's a dinner plate. It, well, it's kind of big for a dinner plate, but, well, I guess if it's a dwarven dinner plate... Okay, here, put your snacks on. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna do 
a dark cocoa num num. I was thinking the exact same thing. Well, why don't you put like three on there so we all can have one? Okay, three dark cocoa num nums. All right, uh, and um, the the activation word is supersize me. Oh, okay. Um, supersize me. Oh my god. Oh, that's that's a lot of chocolate. Oh, oh, damn. Turned it from a nom nom into a pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my. Uh, yeah, the, that's um. Maybe we should only put one. That's that's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Dwarven plate. Mm. Was that? Was about double the size. Please excuse me while I go um eat this right now. Well, we've lost her to the chocolate coma. Could you imagine a chocolate coma being like, "Oh, I'm passed out, and there's just chocolate oozing out of every one of my orifices." I mean, is that is that an exciting thing? I don't. Do your friends and family visit you more often? I was just like. You could be your own Willy Wonka chocolate factory. <laughs> Try explaining the stains on the couch. <laughs> you shit on your head, Roy. No, it's chocolate, I swear. Taste it. <laughs> I leave to go put this in the fridge so I can eat it later, and this is what I come back to. So I, I just can't leave you guys alone ever, right? It's because I leave and chocolate turns into poop jokes? No, we're talking about a chocolate coma. Like if you fall into a coma, chocolate just starts pouring out of you. Like that episode of Invader Zim, where the robot eats all the chocolate and then it just oozes. That was a good episode. Never seen it, but that sounds amazing. <laughs> I only know one thing from Invader Zim, and that's the Doom song. Doom, 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 doom. Same robot. Oh, awesome. So he, like, eats a bunch of chocolate and goes into a coma and starts oozing out of him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he doesn't really go into a coma. He, he, he makes this noise, like this supreme satisfaction. Ah. Is it, is it, is it, <laughs> is it like a Play-Doh masher? It's, it like, kind of like, it's like if you take a Mr. Potato Head <laughs> and you cram it full, full of Play-Doh. <laughs> full of Play-Doh. Everything just starts popping out of every hole. <laughs> Do we have another question? Oh, we need to stop talking about about uh, chocolate coma's. What you know? What that would be pretty amazing. What you know? If it was a magical coma, you could end like world hunger with that. Like no, no, just eat some uh, some of Billy's just you know magic chocolate coma ooze, and that's it. You feed a village. And they all fall into a coma, and then people have to take care of them. And it, oh, oh! So if you eat the the ooze chocolate, then you go into a coma too. But that's that's why you go into a chocolate coma is because you've eaten the chocolate. Oh no! I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't realize that. As well, that's if you eat too much of it. You don't eat all. Of it. Well, I guess if you're eating it all, like ended world hunger with it, anyway, everybody's just eating chocolate. Well, then you're still ending world hunger. It's just a different way. That's a fair point. I guess mass comicide isn't quite the best way to end world hunger. No. Okay, um... I think we do have another question. (laughs) Is it about chocolate comas? No, but it's about food. What about chocolate comma? Oxford has something to say about that. Yes. What did Oxford say about the chocolate comma? It is utterly necessary at all goddamn times. I was going to say, every comma should be a chocolate comma, but then there wouldn't be any left. You imagine if you could just peel a, a comma off a page and just be like, nom, 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 nom. There'd be no commas left in anything. Yeah, I and mean, if you take the book out into the sun, you'd have a bunch of Roman <laughs> sentences. My papers would be a lot more fun to write. And then chocolate would be oozing out of your book. Your chocolate would be oozing out of your book. And you'd have a, your book would be in a chocolate coma. <laughs> oh my god. Every how- library is now inside this a refrigerator. Mental image now of chocolate books where the writing is actually engraved into the page. I'll finish that page. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, uh, what about, uh, I was just thinking if you could take, uh, take anybody in a chocolate coma and then just cover them in like a hard candy shell. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that solve that problem? Like a magical, life sustaining magic shell. Like a hard, <laughs> anti magic hard candy shell. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
Santa Magic Art Candy Shell. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Oh, shit. Hot fudge that casts gentle repose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chocolate ice cream that casts calm emotions. I'm pretty sure that's just inherent magical properties of chocolate ice cream. That's true. Yes, that's true. The velvet creamery and mortuary. <laughs> That's there you go. That's a new food food uh food um title. Uh is the calm emotions chocolate ice cream for the cafeteria. You know, if I ever go into a chocolate coma and have to be covered in an anti magic, life sustaining hard candy shell, just make warn people before they eat me, because there's a nut inside. And sometimes you feel like a nut. And sometimes you don't. <laughs> so anyway, make sure I'll get your nature box. <laughs> What's our next question? As always, the second act is the funnier act. So here we go. Uh, as Calliope said, um, this uh, this question is about food. Um, my roommate thought it would be funny to cast animate dead on the hot dogs I was saving <laughs> until the weekend. What is the best way to catch a hot dog that keeps wriggling away from you? Signed, Noshing on Necromancy. Well, I mean, first you need to catch it. <laughs> if you can muster up the energy. I relish these conversations. You're going to make me one sauerkraut. <laughs> I don't know how you would, um... I mean, could you lure it? back to you somehow? I don't know what you guys' problem is. You just, you need to get them all into, with it, go get some nets, catch them all, put them into a basket, um, and, uh, and then start having, uh, little house parties, uh, where you sell them to your girlfriends. That's what all. What would you call these parties? I think I just thought you were inferring to them a little disgusting. Yeah, well, you should be. Oh! But a a, uh, a self writhing hot dog, I think, is going to be a pretty uh, a pretty exciting thing for some people. Matter of fact, I'll bet it's a billion dollar industry if you do it right. I don't think animated hot dogs is the right way to do it. I mean, first of all, you food no. Second of all, animated dead hot dead meat thing you no. Thirdly. That'll rot at some point, which, again, is you know. Repeat customers. They gotta keep coming back. Uh. <laughs> or you cast gentle repose on your little hot dog before you put it away every night. Oh. <laughs> I think I just tear up my mouth a little bit. <laughs> That's what we'll call it, gentle repose parties. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what they're called in my world. The Smokies? <laughs> <laughs> no, the parties. Gnome-sized. <clears throat> you haven't seen some of the gnome women I have. Oh, pleasure parties. Passion parties, that's what. Yeah, I know. Because everyone is passionate about hot dogs in one way or another. Oh, Yeah. Could you imagine, though, okay, you're taking a bite of this hot dog, and it's writhing, all, wriggling all the way down your neck. What if it decides it wants to stop? Like, nope. <laughs> you start choking on this wriggling hot dog. That's horrible. Well, that's why you have to chew. You got, but what? If, not everybody chews to the same amount. I mean, I don't want to have to be sitting there counting 23, 28, 52. Oh, it's mush now. That's That just turns the baby food in my mouth. I don't like that. Well, have you ever eaten those squid or octopus that are still... Meh? I ate the head off a fish once. How was that? Um, it was pretty good. I've seen some of the things you eat, and I'm not particularly um enthused. We talking about candy? Kid? No. All right. What have I eaten? Five Phoenix chilies is the grossest thing I've ever eaten. At least in front of you. You told me all about the time that you ate that shrimp while I was looking at you. Oh yeah, I did. I ate that shrimp while I was looking at me. Uh, that was fun, and then um. You know, I do. I do keep uh, cycling out my Dean statue. Yeah. My my my, my meat Dean statue. I. Oh God! What if someone cast anime dead on the 
Dean statue. Uh, the meat Dean statue? Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right. So, question asker, you've got to come to my uh, to my room. Uh, just contact me here at the station next week, and we will go cast Anime Dead on my Meet Dean statue uh, with trim fingers. I'm cycling. I'm cycling out the trim fingers once every other day. It's fine. I mean, as long as it's refrigerated, it should be fine. Uh, refrigerated? Oh no. I thought the I thought something killed bacteria, so you're leaving the in the window, rat. It's a miracle you're alive. Can we get Weird Al's living in the fridge to play us out? Uh, probably not. Well, but you could sing a few bars. Living in the fridge. We can't stop the mold from growing. Living in the fridge. Can't tell what it is at all. Living in the fridge. We can't stop the mold from growing. Living in the fridge. The German Advertising Standards Authority has ruled that calling Germans Krauts is not racist, but simply lighthearted, a reference to a national stereotype. Well, if we do not find this program's content funny, we do agree that all of it is accurate. Dust off your dice and hold on to your butts. Do you love magic, mystery, intrigue, and romance? Of course you do. Meet Rowan, the enigmatic bard. Atlas the blacksmith, what a heart of gold. Kristoff, the sorcerer who enchants with both fact and fiction. Join our heroes as they unmake the best laid plans of their indomitable DM in... The, the Lawful Stupid. Stupid. Garlic plantain, so sound delicious.